share that with you guys before we do that I'll share with you guys a little bit about uh, my story just so we're not complete strangers again my name is James and that is my mom's motel that she used to own on Fremont and Eastern uh, I grew up there from I grew up there till I was 25 years old and it was a very interesting life if you are not familiar with Fremont and Eastern if you're not familiar with it no need to be familiar with it and if you are familiar with it, you probably feel bad for me right now also, right? Not the greatest side of town in Las Vegas, but the interesting part about life is you don't really know what's bad until you're kind of told. It's like the thing where sometimes we heard, uh, you don't know what you don't know, right? So I didn't know that. So this is just what I was used to. This was just my upbringing. And, you know, it was home for us. You know, that was our motel. This person that owns it now, they did some, like, it was, this looks nice, to be honest with you. Ours did not look like that in the 90s and the 80s, so. Uh, good for them. But I grew up there at the Town & Country Motel. Um, I will be the first to let you know, yes, I know there's a lot of Asian in this photo. I know there is. But uh, I am the one that is right here with the blonde hair. Right? So you guys can see a little bit right there. Right? And I thought that would be a good idea to grow out my hair back here and turn it blonde. And I learned very quickly that that was a, uh, just a phase of my life that we will not be ever going back to. And uh, I got very lucky. When I turned 19 years old, I met someone who changed my life. I met a mentor for the very first time. And at the time, I didn't know what a mentor was other than the fact of, you know, what the definition of mentor was. And this guy started saying things to me that, you know, honestly, it got me jacked. He started saying things like, you could be successful. You can make a lot of money. You can make more money than your mom. You can retire your mom. He started saying these type of things. And that was the first time in my life that I had ever heard that. When my family and I, we grew up, it was, you go to school, my mom picked me up, we went straight back to the motel. And that was just our daily routine. The only time we actually left the motel was only the time I was at school. We never went to restaurants. Um, to this day, my father's passed away now, but I had ne my father, my two sisters and I, my mom and dad, we've never been out of Las Vegas before, just because the small mom and pop hotel that we had town and country was just a small 31 unit motel so that was just our life and that was the life that I was used to and that was the life that I thought we were gonna live for the rest of my life and that's just what I was gonna do and I thought I was just gonna own this motel and I guess raise kids there just like how I was raised there and that was that was what I thought my life was be everything changed when I met this mentor for the very first time I was 19 years old he started saying things that I didn't even understand what he was saying. He was, he is still a, a good friend of mine, but he's 11 months younger than me. At that time, when he was 18, I was 19, he was making about $10,000 a month. And you have to know that at my mom's motel, you know, it, it may sound cool like, oh, you know, you guys used to own a motel. A good day for us, Craig, would literally be like, you know, if we can make like 300 bucks a day, like we'd be celebrating. You know, I, if we made $300 that day, I knew that Saturday we'd probably get McDonald's or KFC or something like that. That was a celebration for us. And so when I met this guy, he was making $10,000 a month and he was just a public speaker. And it honestly irritated me a little bit and it honestly made me mad because I was just thinking to myself, you know, me and my mom, my mom works 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I did that till I was 25 years old for the first two and a half decades of my life. And it was almost, insulting to know that this guy showed up at a, at a house sometimes or this guy showed up at a, an event space like this you know he could make 10 15 20 thousand dollars a month at 18 years old you know at the time it was a nice car he was driving a Jaguar you know and I was driving my Honda Del Sol and you know it was just a very eye-opening event when I met him for the very first time and it was the first time that I actually said to myself wow maybe I can make money maybe I can do something with my life and it was crazy because he never gave me money. He never did anything other than give me knowledge. And I can't believe how much knowledge can take you and where it can take you, which is where we're gonna be with Pierre Lou. So I met him, um, then I met other mentors. Since him, I'm 40 now, since then I've been mentored by 15 people worth over 100 million and four billionaires um, in success and how to make money and things like that. And so one of my mentors, my main mentor, the mentor that I look up to to this day that I visit four times a year, um, in Florida, he said, you need to come out of the book. Now, I don't know about you guys, I know we're in a library and I probably shouldn't say this. Does anyone not read, like, books? I don't read books at all, just to be very honest with you. That, 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 ain't, that ain't me, 
right? And he's like, you need to come out with a book. And it was a little hysterical to me because, you know, I'm an author, even now, today, to be honest with you, I'm an author, two-time author, and I don't read books, to be honest with you, but hey, that's what it is. So that's my first book, Mobilizing People, and he basically explained to me how uh, Mobilizing People, your first book is gonna be an oversized business card. And I couldn't believe that. And since then, you know, it's made me a few million dollars, which is pretty cool. Uh, my second book, How to Eat Your Way to a Six-Figure Income, teaches people how to go to restaurants and get the owner to pay you to eat there, which is also a lot of fun. All right, um, I started a video production company. That story I'll probably share at a different time just because the full, the, if you hear the full length story on how I started the, our video production company, thanks to Mr. Wong over here and my other partners, it, it, it really is an interesting story, but we don't have time for it today. But we started a video production company over a decade ago. I've produced a little over 10,000 videos, a little over 22 million views on our YouTube videos. I was fortunate to hit the top 40 under 40 here in Las Vegas last year. Uh, I wrote those two books. I speak for the Nevada Army National Guard, and I've been able to speak all around the United States on mobilizing people, how to get along with people, communication, how to make money, how to do digital marketing, and how to do these type of things to really put yourself in a better position financially so you can do what you want, when you want, anytime you want. Okay, Vier Lu, this is what I get to talk about today because you know we're not gonna say it's a workshop and not talk about virtual reality and stuff like that. Okay, so it was around June of 2019, my friend, his name is Danny, calls me up and says, hey, I'm gonna be coming back into America from Korea and we gotta meet up. So I meet him at, if anyone's from uh, Summerlin, there's a Boca Park. Uh, I meet him at the Starbucks in Boca Park. And this is like at eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night. And he starts pitching me on the idea of virtual reality. And this idea came was because he was on a shoot for a music, a K-pop music video. And while they were filming it, he noticed there was a camera that had six lenses and it looked like almost like an alien type of a thing. And he asked me, or I'm sorry, he asked the guy that brought him to the shoot, hey, what type of camera is that? And he was like, it's a virtual reality 360 camera. He's like, oh wow, like when you have your headset. He's like, I would love to see that. And then the guy that brought him said, oh, we're not actually gonna produce anything with it. And my friend Danny was just like, well, what, what's the point of even having it? And he's like, well, one day virtual reality will be a big thing. And the day that it is big, our um, uh, music line will have literally thousands of music videos all filmed in 360. When that day comes, then we'll spend the money to produce the videos. So then, you know, the only difference, in, you've heard this many times before, but the only difference between an average person and a millionaire are, is average people wait and wait and wait while successful people, they see things before they happen. Now, even if you don't like virtual reality, who in this room would probably agree that virtual reality will probably be, be big in the next five, 10, 15, 20 years from today? So if, if you do agree with that, then that's the, if you somehow can be there prior, that's the time to get involved with it, right? How many of you guys in this room have any type of Bitcoin, NFT, any of these new technologies that are coming out in this room? Great, right? So you're ahead of the game because that's just when people make money in whatever they're trying to make money in. What if you could have bought land on, in Las Vegas on Trop and Las Vegas Boulevard uh, 50 years ago? You'd be pretty happy today, right? My mom actually had the opportunity to either buy the motel on downtown or the strip. And this is a good explanation of not seeing vision Back when she bought the motel in the, late, uh, in the late 80s, guess where all the traffic was in Las Vegas? Downtown. So guess where she bought it? Downtown. Versus she didn't see the vision of Las Vegas Boulevard becoming the mammoth that it's become today. Now, um, downtown is, well, downtown. So if you like downtown, I don't want to offend you. Okay, so with that being said, uh, we called one of our friends, her name is Sujin Park. She is the equivalent, or used to be the equivalent of the, Editor-in-chief for Vogue magazine Korea. So she basically does what I do here in America, but she does it in Korea. The executive uh, production part of VRLU and making sure the app works and making sure the content gets created. So she, she one, she's 60, believe it or not. That's that, that Korean skincare stuff, man. That's that Korean skincare where like, I don't know, like killing children and taking their blood. I don't know what they'd be doing over there, but it's, it's almost unreal. Okay. Let's talk about here, Leo.
and then DR Lou. <laughs> in Kent and chasing. We have literally traveled the entire United States filming all these people that I get explained to you guys today. So uh, to give you guys the rundown of it, we started the app in 2019. In October is when we found this, uh, this little bad boy. And the production team got formed, formed. And then we made a deal with a company called GPS to help us market the app itself. And in June of 2020, we were the first company ever that worked with Pico and got us an exclusive, thanks to Mr. Dylan, who actually developed it, which you guys will meet him shortly. Uh, this is exciting because in America, we've all heard of Oculus. In Asia, though, they all use Pico. And thanks to our uh, tech team and our tech geniuses, they were able to make that work for us, which was uh, something cool because no one had ever worked with them here in America, and we were the first to do that, which was awesome. Then in uh, 2020 of February, we got invited to the Super Bowl, which was, you know, again, it was so cool being able to go to the Super Bowl. They wanted us to bring the 360 cameras and they wanted us to show off um, Bay is uh, True Vision, which Jennifer Lopez and Alex Rodriguez, when they were together, but now they're no longer together, rest in peace, but I guess she's happy because she's now married to Ben Affleck, so it doesn't matter. But at the time, uh, it was really cool to be with uh, True Vision at the Super Bowl, and I wanted to show you guys what that looked like. What True Fusion wanted was they wanted us to use virtual reality technology in a way that had never been done before. So we went to San Francisco, we were here in Vegas, and we filmed their True Fusion studios around the United States in 360 VR. So 
when people came up to our booth and they, want, they were interested, oh, JLo's involved, or Alex Rodriguez is involved, why are people so excited about Shoe Fusion? When people put their headsets on, they were able to see what a Shoe Fusion franchise looks like and then virtually purchase them if they wanted to, which was a cool thing that we were able to do. And then they buy the headsets, and then if someone in uh, China wants to buy a Shoe Fusion, they can send a headset over, put the headset on your China, but now you can see exactly what are you gonna get when you buy a franchise. So it's really cool to be able to see companies step up, use VR technology in a way that's never been done before that you had never seen before. Prior and still today, most companies, when you want to see something, you see it just in traditional YouTube videos, 2D format, whatever you see. When you have your headset on, game changer. Okay, as we move forward, March, uh, that's when I got the top 40 under 40 here in Las Vegas, which was really cool. And we started our official YouTube channel. So if you want to see our YouTube channel, our URL is official VRLU. So official VRLU. And our social media campaign started. I go over a lot of this just because I know we have a lot of entrepreneurs in the room that if you yourself want to start a business or you want to start something and you haven't gone about it quite yet, you know, these are some of the steps that we did for VRLU. And I got some cool stuff to share with you guys in a minute. Uh, we started coming out with our, we call these masters that create the content for us. So we started contacting people who were uh, famous of what they do. So we have NFL players, we have Mr. Les Brown. If you're not familiar with Les Brown, he's at least top three greatest speakers of all time. And uh, we filmed him, we actually, during COVID, it might be in the slides, so I'll, I'll jump the gun, but uh, Kent drove us from here to Atlanta, right? And we, because it was during COVID and people were freaked out. We filmed him in an abandoned bank vault. So when you have your headset on, no matter what way you look, you're in a bank vault with Les Brown talking about money, talking about inspiration, right? It was so cool. And if, is there any fans of Les Brown in the room? If you're familiar with his work, he's actually just as nice as you would think he is in the videos. That dude is so, so freaking nice out of Atlanta. As we move forward very quickly, um, I should mention, while all this is going on, Korea, my partner Sujin, she's doing all the Korean stuff. So she has a bunch of actors and actresses and uh, fashion things going on over there that we put on the VR Loop platform. And for new masters, we actually got Mr. Jamal Bryant, who is, um, he, let's just say this, when he streams his church service out of Atlanta, Mr. Jamal Bryant has like 100,000 people streaming. Like he is like the man when it comes to service. And, he was really cool. He's wild. He's crazy, actually. I loved it. Um, and then we were the first people that made an exclusive deal with TCL. And then Mr. Dylan and Mr. Taylor, who you're going to hear in a minute, that's going to talk about the metaverse and all that, they work directly with TCL. Now, if you're not familiar with TCL, they are the third largest TV provider in the world. So out of all the companies that they could have worked with, TCL partnered with VRLU and made this exclusive deal with us to um, us to build the app out with their technology and it was so cool to bring, those are sunglasses by the way, those are actually, that's an actual headset. Yeah, and we were the ones that brought that here to America, which is again, really cool that they trusted our company. So as this accumulated today, we have a little over 100 masters on our platform. But you know, it was it was something that we just kept on grinding and grinding. Uh, we added here in Las Vegas, Mr. Christopher Brown. If you've ever seen a live theater production show in Vegas, more than likely that dude is in it. Raquel Sharper on the far far left right here um, travels all around the United States. Jordan McClanahan out of California, uh, which was really really cool too. 
Okay, uh, Kevin Harrington, if you aren't familiar with Kevin Harrington, he was actually the first shark from Shark Tank. And so he went on it, and again, a lot of these people like Shark Tank, if you Google Kevin Harrington, he's worth over nine figures. You know, and a lot of times, you know, and I don't know your perception of people that have a lot of money, but sometimes you, you know, you don't know what to expect. You know, and, and I'll tell you what, he is, the, some of these people, they are some of the nicest people that were just so open to new technology and filming with us and creating new content and all that good stuff. So. Uh, props to all of them. And then we got, um, we started building out our fitness, uh, the fitness side of Vierlu. If you name an important, famous person in fitness, they're probably on our site. And if they get paid a seven figure income and above, they're probably on our site. Uh, this was cool. Davey Liu, my, my, my boy China Man right here, you can't really see him. Davey Liu was cool. Who's seen the movie Mulan in the 90s, the animated one? You know uh, Mulan's boyfriend, Shang? He, uh, he's the artist, and he took a picture of himself, drew himself, and then turned that into Disney, and then they, they used them. Wow. So he tells his daughter, I'm Shang. Wow. Right? And, and, and he has the original, that dude has the original um, handwritten renderings of Beauty and the Beast that he drew and Lion King. Wow. Come on! Right, so on our app, like we legitimately have some of the most, like a lot of these people, you're like, I don't know this person, I don't know this person, I don't know this person, you know? But when you hear what they've done, you're just like, what the heck, you know? It's the coolest, some of the, this, this whole part, this two years that myself, Kent, and Chasing, as we were like literally just driving around the United States, uh, filming all these people, it was wild, man. It was wild, and no one got killed, can't they? Yeah, I'm surprised. No one got killed, I'm surprised too. All right, uh, Rebecca Beckler. She and who's ever seen the TR TR uh, X band at gyms? Is it, what's the name? TRX. TRX. Okay, she invented that, and she did it out of the hospital because her daughter was uh, ill, and so she couldn't work out anymore. So then she made that the Pilates uh, suspension, which is oh. wild, 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 wild. Uh, far left, Nagan, she speaks from Mercedes-Benz on corporate, on how to, how to have corporate relation, basically. So again, it's a very interesting courses that these people created where they teach you the fundamentals of how they became successful at whatever they became successful at, and they break it down in a course form in 360. So no matter what way you're looking, you're always seeing something really, really cool. And uh, we kept on adding Master of VA. Uh, if you aren't familiar, this is pretty cool. Um, Sarah Chelobad, she's, uh, she's the shallowest for the Las Vegas Raiders today. And then, it's cool because we had these people before they got their gigs, you know, because we had the foresight. And then, um, Pip, if you ever get invited to an underground magic ring, he's the magician for it at the Manly Bay. It's something you can't buy tickets for, you have to be invited. I mean, you obviously have to buy tickets, but it's like this underground magician thing where you like, you have to go to this bar and then they put you through this do secret door to see his magic show. Only 30 people are invited a day. Uh, if you ever get invited to it, uh, that's, that's him, which is really, really cool. So it's Fight Club without the fight. Yeah, but with magic, James said. Uh, then we started getting to theater. So we got the Nevada Shakes uh, Shakespearean Festival and they redid Romeo and Juliet all in 360. So we put the camera in the middle, and so no matter what way you're looking, there's actors, Romeo's on one side, Juliet's on the other side, and all the people, they're all around, and we created the first 360 production of Romeo and Juliet in, three, um, in VR 360. So it's really, really cool. So no matter what way you're looking, you're seeing Romeo and Juliet and all that good stuff, which was, you know, it's really, really cool stuff. Uh, Taylor Crosta, uh, Cirque Dancer. Does anyone know out of Britain, Charlie XEX, -X -X, the singer, pop star? She's not as popular anymore in America, but she was popular here in America. Um, we did a, uh, so Taylor was her, uh, Charlie's dancer. And then she, and then I hired her to do this music video for Love, Lies, and Fiction. So I wanted to show you guys that because what you're about to see, we did, recreated the behind the scenes fully also in 360. So check this out. They call me a fool, but they never met a woman like you 
what you do is all voodoo. I'm so into the way that you move. I never met anyone else who destroys me. Two parts sunshine and one part stormy. Just like the summer, bringing out the thunder. You're a lightning strike that I'm standing right under. and uh, commented, then they picked someone, and then we shipped the painting to their house. So, you know, that was, a, that was really cool, too. Um, and Taylor, she's badass. Forgive my language, but she's bad, that girl. And then she's in Vegas, so if you guys ever run into her, let her know that you saw her. And she's in VR Lou, so she did an entire experience of the fundamentals of dance. She does an improv dance session like that in 360, and she's like circling around the camera. So, like, literally, when you have your headset on, you're following her the whole time. Like, as she's just going nuts. And then we did the behind the scenes of this awesome 360, which was a lot cool. Okay, um, we are coming out, we came out with uh, AI language learning content, VR concerts, we talked about that. And then um, what we're working on right now, which excites me, uh, thanks to Dylan and Taylor, who you're about to see in a minute, is um, taking e-commerce and virtual reality to the next level. You might hear a familiar voice. <laughs> To travel is to live. GPS is excited to announce a brand new opportunity that allows GPS influencers to tap into a $2.9 trillion industry. Travel the world and visit the most stunning and beautiful vacation destinations around the globe. And earn an income doing it. That's right, get paid to travel the world with GPS. Earn travel benefits anywhere in the world. Airfare, hotels, cruises, car rentals, and so much more. Imagine experience your destination in VR before booking your vacation. The future is here with GPS Travel. 
Don't gamble your vacation by booking what you've seen in filter photos. See it in virtual reality. Get ready because this one-of-a-kind opportunity arrives in 2022. Until then, bon voyage! travel websites is the, the the rooms don't look like what they look like in the photo because in the photos guess what they always look perfect right so virtual reality and thanks to the brilliant Dylan over here and Taylor and being able to utilize virtual reality technology building custom apps for businesses and building these applications so you can see exactly what does my vacation look like what will my vacation look like is an exciting thing you know, and, it's, and for a lot of people, how many, I don't know if you guys are any YouTubers in this room, but it, if you guys are ever on YouTube, I like watching like nice hotels, you know, or if someone shows this new car they have. I like seeing the, 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 the showing off the new car and stuff like that. VR can take travel literally a whole new world. And it's so exciting to help build that whole technology out. Uh, I'm gonna skip this one. Okay, good, I'm done for now. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap my part up with basically VR Lou. Uh, so exciting and we have been working really really hard over the past 12 months and we're so excited because we have a potential new partner that's going to be partnering up with VRLU that um, I've signed NDAs with today but I'm hoping in the next month or two uh, we can talk about this new partnership that's going to take fitness literally to a brand new level and the vision of what this company wants us to do with VRLU and taking the fitness industry is very, very exciting. So hopefully next time we sit down, I can actually share with you the fundamentals of what we're actually doing with fitness and travel and all the other things. And don't forget, if you guys ever have any questions for us regarding anything, we're gonna do a Q&A after Taylor's finish. And all you have to do is text us any questions regarding anything that I talked about today or anything you may want to talk about to the community number. And then when we're doing the Q&A after Taylor's part, we're gonna answer those questions live for you. Cool? All right. All right.